Hello, and welcome to another episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationship from from surviving surviving to thriving. Today on TMC, let's talk about sex. While you're joining us today, go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Sex is one of the top two things that couples often have issues about. So we were like, let's talk about it. So today we'll be talking about sex. Even myself, you know, as an adult, it was many, many years into our marriage as a married couple before I was comfortable just comfortable having conversations about sex yeah. and I mean it's not like we wasn't doing it we were mad we were married we yeah. were having sex but just the thought of talking about it it was like oh my god don't say that right. be quiet <laughs> Shh, somebody's gonna hear right. you know and um well, as we talked we talked about how big of an issue this is for marriage because even as we talked about it we, we talk about it with other couples or even when we hear about it, sex and intimacy are sometimes ran together. And their sex is one thing for a man. Sex is another thing for a woman. Intimacy is one thing for a man, another thing for a woman. But if we are like I was for many years and not talking about it, then what kind of issues and problems could that create for our relationships and our marriages? Why do you think we have that issue talking about sex? I thought about that. And I thought about that because after we talked about it being an issue, and I knew that I know that it was an issue for me to even talk about it for many years, it was like, why? And the thing about it, I think as growing up in church, being raised in a family of Christians and believers, growing up as a kid in church, you know, all we're taught is, you know, don't have sex before marriage. Sex is a sin. Sex is a sin. Don't do this. Don't have sex. You can get pregnant. All we hear is don't and stop. But then when you get married, it's like the opposite. Like, don't stop having sex now because that's what you're supposed to do because you're married. But before it was like, don't and stop. And then the educational part, like your parents talk to you about you're going to start having these feelings or they may talk to you about the birds and the bees and they may talk to you about the idea of getting pregnant if you have unprotected sex and that you're not supposed to have sex until marriage. But the conversation never really goes past that. I mean, for other people, maybe it does. But, you know, for me growing up, the conversation didn't go past that. The conversation was about, you know, you're not supposed to have sex until you're married and don't do this. And it's a sin. And that was pretty much it. And then, you know, when you start having these feelings, talk to your parent about it. But that was it. It was nothing else to come after that. Yeah. And and really for me as a, as a male, I mean, my parents didn't talk about sex at all. I mean, I hear people say the birds and the bees. I didn't even know about that. And all the sex, my sex education came from the classroom. See, I mean, I'm talking elementary school, Mm -hmm. elementary school classroom. I mean, you know, talking about, you know, sex and you have a bunch of elementary skills. I mean, you got to think about we all males, right? So we all males and we're making up all these stories about something we have nothing. We don't know anything about even that early. I mean, it's like maybe around third grade, third grade, that's something that, that, that we're talking about. You know, we're talking, we're supposed to be physical education, PE, you know, we're supposed to be doing that. And we're sitting there talking about girls and we're talking about doing this and this, 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 you know, my education came from an eight year old and it's so weird to me. I mean, something that's so, I mean, it's like so important. It's super important. I mean, Especially it's like, it, it's, it's super yeah. important. And, and then we get into relationships and still don't understand sex and we still don't want to talk about it. For some people, that's what causes the thing. Hush, don't talk about it. It's a secret. You know, we just supposed to do it. Are you supposed to know I want to do it? Are you supposed to know I don't want to do it? And we don't think about all the things that go along with that because even once you get married, depending upon what point in stage and age in life you get married, like for us, we got married very young. So it's like you're growing and you're learning all of these things together and you're experiencing a lot of things together. But for someone that gets married later in life, their sexual experience could be totally different. So let's go ahead and get into it because we had a conversation just two episodes ago with another couple. Mm -hmm. I talked about publicly how you know, 23 years of our marriage, I never stepped outside of our marriage. Mm-hmm. I never cheated on you. I mm-hmm. went outside the marriage. And in our relationship, I had no need to step out the marriage because mm-hmm. you 
always gave me not just what I wanted, but you always gave me what I needed. And um, I think that's a lot of things that may be missing in a lot of relationships. I mean, I don't want to justify, you know, cheating right. from the man or the woman. But I mean, it's from my side, I mean, being um, being a man and being competitive, mm-hmm. you know, it's like always, you know, it's one of the things like, man, I want to I want to I w- I wanna do a good job. You know, mm-hmm. I want to make sure I want to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm performing. I want to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I want to make sure. Uh, not only uh, am I satisfied, but uh, making sure that you're satisfied. And I remember early in our relationship, I mean, I, I remember, I remember, do you remember this? It's something you used to do and I really didn't like it. Yeah. And you're looking like, what? You know, and, and I, I believe at that point, that's when it's kind of to be more mature, you know, and having those marital conversations or those sex conversations, mm-hmm. because that's something that you just didn't talk about. I mean, we started talking about it and it just made things better. better. It's like mm-hmm. everything I wanted or everything I needed as a person, we have those conversations. It's like, okay, we have those conversations. So you know what I need. I know what you need. We make it happen. The thing about it, what we're talking about today is discussing, talking about sex with your partner. So if one person feels like it's too much or, you know, we, you want to do this all the time, the other person feels like I'm not getting enough or I'm not being pleased or whatever, then the first thing to do is to step back and mm. to have a conversation about it. Because like I said, in the beginning of our marriage in it's not something I talked about, not something I even felt comfortable talking about. And if you would start to talk about it, I'm like, uh, don't say that. There's nobody here but me and you, but it's right. still like, don't say that. Right. But once I understood that the first time you said that there was something that you didn't like, yeah. you know, or I prefer this, when you say that, then I know what to do. And so therefore we continue to grow in, in that area together. And so therefore you are fulfilled, your desires are met, your needs are met, your wants are met. Yeah. And we're talking about it. And even to this day, we, I believe now at almost 23 years of marriage, we talk about it more than we ever have before. Yeah. And it now is more like hmm. a checkup. You know, like, you know, are you good? Is this good for you? Is this good for you? Is this not working for you? Is there something you would like for me to do more or whatever, something I could be doing different? And people may think, or someone may think that, you know, if you still have the mindset that you're not okay with talking about it, what you have to understand is if you don't let someone know how you feel or what you need, then they cannot give it to you. And so that's always going to be a friction and a problem because I desire something that I'm not getting. We talk, I talked about a few minutes ago, you know, sex and intimacy being different from men and women. So if you don't know that uh, sex and intimacy starts for me way before we get into the bedroom under the covers, then you cannot give me what I need. So yeah. when I think about intimacy, for me, I think about affection. I think about affirmation and I think about attention your attention, your affirmation, and your affection. So you showing me attention that I love, you know, that's you grabbing me on my hand. That's you every morning before you go to work, kissing me on my forehead. That's you saying, I love you every time we get off the phone. That's that's your attention. You know, saying, babe, oh, you look nice. Oh, I like you. Your makeup look good. Oh, your outfit. I like that on you. That's your attention. Your affection is that little touch, you know, or we're, we're going to the park and you holding my hand, like, you know, we was raining and you hold, keeping me from falling down you know, grabbing my hand, you know, in the mall or whatever. And it's not something that we do all the time, but those things happen and that's your attention and your affection. And then your affirmation, you're beautiful. I love you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy we're together. I thank God for our lives, things like that. Those things also set a tone for our relationship. And it's like, I'm fulfilled with what I need. So then I have a desire to fulfill what you need. Talking about sex, period, yeah. with your spouse, talking about any past experiences, any wounds, any trauma, any hurt. And as well as we're talking about sharing your wants, your needs, your desires. Yeah. And this is something that we do, and we, we really got good at this. We're doing it with each other. And it's the question, uh, what do you need? Not mm-hmm. what you want. Yeah. What you need. Yeah. What do you what do you need from me? I mean, even in and we're talking today about sex. I mean, sex is like, what do you what makes you happy? What do you like? Do you like it like that? Do you, I mean, I mean, it's take, take the, the guesswork out mm-hmm. of it. I mean, this is not Hollywood. I mean, take the guesswork out of it and have that conversation. We've been married 23 years. Um, we, we're not perfect but we're together. Mm -hmm. We have a happy marriage. Mm -hmm. We're sharing with you what working for us. We're sharing with you why after 23 years, I'm still 
just have my eyes on my wife and on no other woman. It's a reason for it. It's not because, because, oh man, he's a good man or she's a good woman. It's because of what we do for each yeah, other, dude. what we're feeding to each other. So the first thing is what do you need? It's very important to so ask them what they need. Take the guesswork out. Absolutely. And, and that's important because what you said, it helps you you know, we don't have, we won't have this mindset that they should know, or no. they, or they can make me feel this. They can, they can meet the need, but they can't meet the need without knowing what the need is. Right. They can't satisfy you without knowing what satisfy you. And I would say this, just do talk about what you need, what you like, instead of, I don't like when you do that. I don't want you to do that. Oh, I want you to, just, yeah, don't do that. That's focus huge. on, babe, you like him rubbing your feet. Focus on, That's babe, huge. I like when, when you start out rubbing my feet, rubbing my back, whatever. Start off, just talk about the things that you desire wow. and that you like. Don't do all that, what you don't like. Don't be no. making faces and uh, don't do that. Don't, don't do all of that have a have a conversation and sometimes it the 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 timing of this conversation there's a you can have this conversation when you guys are being affectionate you can have this conversation nice sweet conversation babe i love when you rub yeah. my back like exactly. that. exactly oh you can play yeah. some games i yeah. mean make some games out of it exactly Be like you know what I'm, I, I'm i'm holding you under arrest yeah you tell me whatever you want me to do i'm gonna do and then you go i mean that's a it's a it's a sexy a uh, freaky way of, of, of for them, the married folks <laughs> for, uh, for them telling you what they want. Absolutely. I mean, you just you, you just you just take you just taking care of your business. Absolutely. You taking Absolutely. care of your business. <laughs> Uh, absolutely and it, and again it takes the guesswork out of it yeah. and this is some listen listen it's time we are gaining wisdom and knowledge yeah. there is so much information in the world Cedric has just told you and we say it all the time August 31st this year we've been married for 23, 23. years yeah. so if we're sharing this with you because it worked for us then if you've been married six months six days six years if you've been married 16 years it's information that you can use and you can use it to make your physical sexual relationship better we're not telling you what to do how to do it. We're telling you the things that work. So starting off by being open about anything that you have in the past, any trauma, any experience that makes sex difficult for you, or anything that makes it uncomfortable for you, anything, anything that affects your intimacy, your physical sexual intimacy with your spouse, talk to them about it. And then the second thing, tell them what you need. No. Tell them what you need. No guessing games, no wondering. If you're going to play a guessing game, play the game he just talked about, a game of you figuring it out together, but not a game of, I'm just going to let you figure out that I don't like that. I'm just going to let you figure out that I like this. Yeah. Talk about it. And this, and there's perfect times to talk about you, it. You said something that was key. And I really want to, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. especially to my sisters, I want you to focus on what you want. Yeah. And stop talking about what you don't, don't want. want. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I mean, that's a, that's a turn off for a man every time he do something and it's always, I don't like this. Ew, don't do that. Ew, don't do that. Get out the TV. Get out the game. Get out the this, this, this. It's like, it, it's like, Stop talking about what you don't want and talk mm -hmm. about what you do want. Absolutely. It's that simple. Just switch it. It's a minor change. Just turn it, change the perspective and talk about what you want. Matter of fact, talk, y'all talk to each other. For example, hey, what do you want? Absolutely. What do you need? And, and, and her asking the same thing. Absolutely. And even planning it because you just said something. You said, stop watching TV, get off the game. You do this too much, whatever. If those are the things, if it's timing, if you want him to spend more time with you, plan things, plan romantic dinners, plan time alone, whatever you want to the, the whole experience that you want to lead up to what you desire, then plan it and show them or tell him, oh, babe, I would love for you to plan a picnic yeah. on the patio. I would love a candlelit dinner. Let's do a candlelight dinner. Whatever it is that you want to talk about, whatever it is that you want to see more in your life, whatever it is that you want to experience more physically with them, talk about it, show them, you know, guide them, work together. Yeah, I want to be practical mm -hmm. uh, with things that we are actually doing. So one of the things, for example, um, I call you, I talk to you at work. Every time I leave home, 
I call you, you know, just to call, say, even if I say I love you, mm-hmm. you know, I, I remember <laughs> I was at work and I sent you a text and the text was, you know, I had this happy face with these emojis. hearts and with the emojis. And, um, you know, I had this text, so we going back and forward and we kind of like, <laughs> you know, flirting on the text mm-hmm. messages. And then by the time I got home, you gave me, I mean, I'm talking, I got home from work. I mean, it's like, it's already know what time it is because women respond to what they hear. Mm-hmm. Men respond to what they what we see. Feel. What we hear, what we feel, how okay. we feel by what you, what yeah. we hear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and men respond to, men respond to what they see. Mm-hmm. If if it's looked at from the standpoint that it's my pleasure, it's my pleasure because your pleasure is what I need, the affection, the attention, the mm-hmm. affirmation. And then my pleasure is in return to give you what you need. Yeah. And it's not it's not with question. It doesn't feel like an obligation. It doesn't feel forced. It's ha- I'm happy to do it because at the same time, both parties are being fulfilled. Both parties are receiving what they desire. Both parties are receiving what they need. Yeah, and I, I think that's another thing. I mean, that, I want you to speak from the women's mm-hmm. point of view. All I can do is speak from the man's point of view because I'm a man. But I think one of the worst things for a man is rejection, mm-hmm. is rejecting sex. I mean, after a few times of that, I mean, it, it's he's not getting that. Responding from rejection, because as women, we could do that. You know, uh, you didn't firm me so I'm not giving you what you you know I'm not doing this to you or I'm upset with you don't touch me you didn't take out the trash don't look at me you know you didn't do this you didn't do that or whatever and then you know we can get to where it's like a um, something that we're using as a control mechanism so then the understanding would be that that's not something good to do It's definitely you want to talk about how you feel you want to talk about what it is that you desire what you need or what you're always feeling that person's love tank. You're always feeling your significant other's love tank. They're always feeling yours and you're openly communicating about what you want, what you need, what you desire. And you're open to pleasure each other. From my perspective as a woman, if I'm not emotionally getting what I need, kind of get to the point where you just holding back. And that's because you're not being fulfilled emotionally. So if you're not being fulfilled emotionally, I'm not getting the intention, the attention I need. I'm not getting the affirmation I need. I'm not getting the, I'm, you're beautiful. I love you. I'm, you know, I'm not getting the touch on the hand or whatever that is for me. If that's not being done, then that's when the idea will come that you're kind of like, this is not something I want to do because I don't even feel it. So another thing I do as far as, you know, feeding your affection, um, I know you like when I, when I grill, mm-hmm. you like when I grill. So what I would do, you know, so I'm feeding that part of you. So in return, I get what I need from you. And I remember one time I was traveling and um, <laughs> I bought you some flowers. Yeah. You had been but, away from home for a while. Right. Yeah. For you, I would put up my, put up my flannel pajamas <laughs> hmm. and pull out the lace. Yeah. I'm going to make, I'm going to shower. I mean, I always shower, but I'm going to put on, you know, my smell good. I'm going to put on the smell good that you compliment me most about. I'm not just, I love perfume. So I'm not just going to put on the perfume that I like. I'm going to put on the perfume that Mm -hmm. you compliment me the most on. I'm going to uh, make sure that, you know, everything is ready for you. Um, So I'm, I know that, (laughs) stop it. So, you know, you, you're, you know, men are visual, you know, so it's the whole, I, I, I know you're a quality time person. So I may come sit out on the porch with you in the patio. And then after that, you know, I'm going to take a shower and I'm going to put on the lace instead of my big t-shirt and my flannel pajamas, you know? So that's what, you know, the things that I would do to feed the desires that you have and what you appreciate. Like you said, it's what you've always told me men are visual. You've always told me men are visual. So that's in my mind. If if it's an intimate thing or if, if I'm initiating sex, right. then I'm going to do those things that you've told me. And those things are men are visual. So that's when the lace comes out. And that's when the smell good that you compliment me most on right. is what I put on. Because I say that smell good for that. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to wear that to work because that's for you. Yeah. So it's things like that. And then the fact that we communicate, I mean, even in times of, you know, we've had times when we're laying in the bed and we're talking about what we like, what we don't like. What <laughs> Stop being silly. We're talking about what we appreciate, what we desire. And that, to me, that's helpful to me because then I know what 
you want. I know what intrigues you. I know what, what turns you on. I know what excites you. I know what you need from me. And so in, in times of me connecting with you, it's not even about what I need. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm like my needs disappear, but what I'm saying is that what's on my agenda I, is to meet those. I really love you said that. And I don't want to go past that because that is so important to always remember men and women are different. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's things that you like that. It's like, man, I don't necessarily like it, but yeah, I'm going to do it because that's of you, important. because that's what love is love. But th this is what true love is. This is true love. When you love somebody, mm -hmm. it's like, even when I don't feel like it, I'm going to do it anyway. I mean, that's what that's what love is. Yeah, it's that's making what... making the choice to make that person priority, making the choice to to feed what the other person needs, making the choice to fulfill the other person's desire. And we we never look at this thing as a one sided thing like you're fulfilling my desire. And that's what this is about. It's it's a two way street. And as, as long as it's always a two-way street, it's never a competition. It's always a two-way street. So both, it's just like you both running over because, and someone said this to me, and, and this is now the way I articulate it, that sex begins before you get into the bedroom Absolutely. for women. It begins, long, it begins long before you get into the bedroom. So with that being said and expressed, then you know that. And it's both parties doing what pleases or pleasures the other party. Absolutely. For example, that may be a woman, uh, affection for her, maybe social media. Mm -hmm. maybe just you having your status saying you're married, married. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it, it, in it, a relationship. Right. Yeah. And it's like acknowledging, mm -hmm. acknowledging me as your wife. If that's important to your wife, do it. Yeah. Do it. That's what love is. It's like, you know what? Maybe you don't think it's a big deal, but if it's a big deal to her, do it, do it. And you just said, you said at least three times, that's what love is. And that's what leads to the physical part. When that person, because that's what we're talking about, when that person's needs are met outside of the sheets, then it's a lot easier for them to meet your needs Easy. in between the sheets. It's just like cutting butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, and, and that is that's the truth. There's no other way to say it. When a when when the when your significant other, your husband, your wife, your when their needs are met outside of the sheets. It's no, it's no issue for them to please you between the Yeah, Miles Monroe says something, and I thought it was a great analogy. He talked about a, a, a car. Mm -hmm. He said a car need gas, gas. Yeah, to sure drive did. it, right? You know, mm -hmm. driving marriages, driving yep. relationship. A car need gas yes. to drive. Mm -hmm. And he asked this question to uh, to his congregation. Yep. He said, do you, do you drink, drink gas? Drink gas. Mm -hmm. And like... Of course you, you don't drink you gas, but like your car need gas. Exactly. So you have to go to the gas station and, and it's so, and gas is so important for a vehicle. And you know that because you know, if you don't put gas in that car, it's not nowhere. going nowhere. Mm -hmm. So the thing about it, if you go to one gas station, that don't have gas, what you're going to do, go you're going to find another gas mm -hmm. station because you understand how important it is and you can't run out of gas. And with that same analogy, that's how we need to look at our relationship. Mm -hmm. Just like that gas station. Yes. It's like, you know what? I put gas in her. She put gas in me. It's like you, it's, you have to go to the gas station that has the gas. And he also said something I thought was real cool. He said, you know what? And he, and when you get the gas, don't get the regular unlit, get that high octane, premium. <laughs> you know, get the premium gas, yeah. you know, put the good stuff, you know, the good things into your relationship, you know, have that, have that good dinner, have that good uh, contact and, good and connection, time. that good quality time, not on your cell phone when you're supposed to be having quality time. Yeah. Like, no, we're not talking about, you know, no regular low, mm -hmm. low octane gas. No, we're talking about premium, having that premium relationship, premium time spent, premium love, premium hanging out, premium watching the football game. If he like football, don't be talking about how think it's so crazy that they hit each other and all that. If he like boxing, don't talk about how it's crazy and stupid you think boxing is. No, sit there. Matter of fact, you want me to tell you what you'll do? This is how you put premium gas in it. When when he's watching the game, go cook some popcorn. Yeah. Pop the popcorn and say, here you go, baby. Yeah, sit here down you go, and baby. watch with him. And watch it with him. Watch it with him. Prime yeah. gas, prime yeah. time, prime connection. That's what 
ups the relationship game. Mm -hmm. That's what the things like that. I believe those type of things is what's going to decrease the divorce rate. When we're intentional, just yeah. like we're intentional on going to the gas station, we're intentional about satisfying our wives, satisfying our husband. That's what we need to do. Absolutely. Yeah, babe. And you were talking about how you pour into me and how you grill and you do things that I like to do or that I like you doing. And so when I was thinking, I was thinking about like for me, the thing that I do speaks to what you were talking about earlier when it comes to rejection. You know, I never reject you in a sexual way my I always affirm you and let you know that I desire you that I have a sexual desire for you a physical desire for you yeah. we talked about um all the time you always used to say to me you know men are visual and and I do that mm. I do things to make sure that I'm visually appealing to you and I will do my best to make sure that I also initiate sex with you or initiate intimacy with you or spending time with you because I know that that's important also it's pours into you for you to know that I want you and I desire you in the same manner that you want and desire me the same way you love me I love you and so that's something that I do to pour into you is always affirming you and letting you know that I'm attracted to you. I love you. I desire you. And you said that and that's totally correct. I mean, that's one of the things, I mean, that's why I don't know. I, I, I don't desire any other woman because I mean, you the one, I mean, even going back to, you know, um, of, affirming mm -hmm. you know you always affirm me you always tell me how good of a person i am how yeah. much you love me how much i mean to you and it keeps me it really it keeps me locked in on you it's yeah. like dude i ain't trying to well, for what it's like for what i'm getting everything i need at home and you know i get all the affection that i need i mean i get all the you know the really honestly the thing the men need mm -hmm. men need that i mean we that's why we're so competitive mm -hmm. men are competitive i mean sports was made for you know football bats all that it was made for men because Absolutely. men are competitive we're competitive creatures you know just thinking about what you're what you're saying i mean it really you know you feed you feed into all that mm -hmm. all all those areas i need you feed into it so i don't have to get it from no one Absolutely. i mean I, there's no woman that i ever worked with that that, that can come out and say I, tr I was flirting with them or whatever i mean there's nothing like that because i i get what i need at home and you always done that you always uh done a great job uh with that even from the beginning and that's that goes back to what we were saying about filling up the other person so as long as your needs, your desires, and what you need as a man is filled and fulfilled, then it's nothing, it's nothing, or it's easier. It's like you said, it's like butter. It's easy for you to fulfill what I need and what fulfills me because it's a, it's a give and take. It's a, a, a constant exchange. Absolutely. Premium octane, premium relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. So what, what's, what's the first thing? The first thing is to share mm -hmm. vulnerability, share any past trauma, any past uh, abuse, any past uh, sexual experiences that have you know, left scars or wounds or anything like that, share those things with your spouse so that they are aware and know how to love and care for you. All right. What's the second practical? The second thing was to tell them what you need. Mm. Do not expect your spouse to guess. Take the guessing out. Tell them what you need. And we said to approach it from the vantage point of what you like, not what you don't like what you love about them, what they do that you appreciate it, how you love your foot to be rubbed or your back to be rubbed or whatever it is that feeds that part of you that encourages you to be sexually intimate with them. Tell them what you need. What's number three? Number three is understanding that men and women are different. Absolutely. We hope you enjoyed this episode today of TMC. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe comment and click the like button so you'll be notified when we upload a video every week and if you're listening on itunes rate the podcast and leave a review and head on over to lead to greatness this is our podcast where my husband is interviewing entrepreneurs and great leaders every week so we want to thank you for joining us today on tmc looking forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you take your relationship from, from surviving, surviving to thriving. Bye. See, See you next week. week.